Yes, the book faces people. Hey, book of faces. What's Hi, up, guys? Y'all? Hello to our IG family as well as our Facebook family. It is Nuggets with Nathalie. It's Friday night. Grab your water or your adult beverages because we're going to have a key key tonight because I am on the line with my, okay, I don't know if you guys have one, but I can say that I have a leadership and team development expert. <laughs> Hey guys, <laughs> that has taken my life to a whole nother level. What movie was that? A whole nother level, dog. <laughs> <laughs> a whole nother level. So let me tell you, in times like these, it is so important for us to not only surround ourselves by, you know, positive things, motivating things, songs, music, content, but people who motivate you. Um, people, networks are your currency, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm boasting on you, Aisha, <laughs> because your network is your net worth. And there is nothing more devastating, particularly in stressful, anxiety-filled times like this, to be surrounded by negative people. That only adds to like whatever difficulty you have. And so I am so glad that I have, right, facts, t Lance said facts, all caps, hashtag. <laughs> So I am so, so glad that you are in my life um, and that you are inspiring, motivating, and that you could be on Nuggets with Napoli to help the people like you helped me. So go ahead, Ice. Let's start with first. So as we're going to talk about leadership today, we're going to talk about personalities a little bit. Our focus is going to be limiting beliefs. So if you're having trouble with what's happening and it's triggering trauma and Uh, negative thoughts, or if there's negative people um, and environments that's uh, impacting the way that you are um, showing up for yourself, for your team, whatever it is, we're going to talk about tools and tips and strategies to help you overcome those limited beliefs. But let me tell you about my homegirl, Ice. Ice, why are we late tonight? (laughs) Well, I have this 19, no, I have like, it's my laptop, okay, y'all, don't judge me, but it is, like, even right now, I don't even know if y'all can see me on Facebook, because I don't even see anything, am I still on Facebook? I can see you. Okay, well, babe, my laptop, it can't see me, I can't see it, but yeah, it's my fault, okay, Um, so please, don't judge me, I tried, anybody want to do a GoFundMe to get me a MacBook? Please. <laughs> I think I think you are well deserved. I think it's time. I think it's yes. more than time. Listen. Yes. If you guys are on, go ahead, like, share, comments. Your comments will be live like this. I love Aisha. Uh, this is a conversation. We're gonna have a real conversation. We're gonna talk about overcoming limiting beliefs. We're gonna talk about um, leadership and leading your team particularly in times like these. Um, and Aisha was super stressed out because her computer wasn't working, but now we're all, it's all Gucci. <laughs> and I think because now my screen is black. So, you know, my camera's on, so I'm thinking I'm good. <laughs> See, but if you were around someone that was super negative, like that would be, be terrible. But it's like, hey, you can hear exactly. us. You, they're <laughs> laughing at us on IG right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Shout out. You're good. It's all good. All right. So y'all talk to us tonight. We're going to be having a conversation. So let's start with what are limiting beliefs? How do you define that? Well, when it comes to limiting belief, I think it's those um, experiences or those situations that you are part of. And what happens is like, I, I look at it like if, uh, say it's a garden, right? And say you have a, a negative experience and what happens is somebody does or says something that um, is a blow to your confidence, a blow to your ego. And now they're depositing, like it's, they're planting little seeds. And what happens is start you start to have these 
limitations or believe that you have these limitations that stops you from hitting your goals, mm-hmm. that stops you from getting to that next level, that stops you from effectively leading. So now like you're limiting yourself. And what happens is like over time, that water or, or that seed that was planted starts to get water with more doubt. And again, sometimes it's the relationships we were in. It might be our upbringing. It might have, again, not negative experiences that you've had. Like for instance, I was re- reading this Forbes article and there's this business coach and she was saying how she had a client who was super confident. And what happened was one of her supervisors or someone on the leadership team said something to her negative and that was her mm-hmm. first experience with something negative and now she that deposit was made that oh you're not good enough so now she started to be hesitant so it started she started to believe that she had limitations and those limitations will make you believe that you can't get to that next level so it's really tied to experiences it might be deeply rooted from childhood things you experience relationships and mm-hmm. now you are believing that there's limitations within yourself and you can't get to the next level because of those limitations. And you know, what's really crazy about limiting beliefs. And I love the analogy and the metaphor of the garden, right? Because a garden needs to be tended. It needs to be cultivated. It needs to be nurtured. But the thing about limiting beliefs is that we can nurture that to the point where it becomes our reality. Um, that we become self-sabotaging, that we enter into toxic relationships, that we um, even, you know, mess up the great things and opportunities in our lives because those little seeds become so ingrained into what we have come to believe as reality, whether they're true, true or not. And another thing that we were talking about and that I've really been with my spiritual director dealing with and working through is how a lot of those limiting beliefs ultimately come from either trauma or some kind of tragic, I don't even wanna say tragic because not everybody has a tragic experience in their childhood, but something that greatly impacted us in our childhood that psychologically, emotionally, grabs us. And in times that are highly stressful like this, you have these triggers. Yes. Can you talk, as you talk about that metaphor in the garden, what are some ways that we can get to the point to really even understand what what and when those limiting beliefs are, are showing up? Well, of course, it's, it's definitely like, it's important that we dial back and identify what the root cause was, right? So um, I talked about this earlier today. The interesting thing, if, if you think about a tree, um, somebody say you want to cut your tree down, boom, you're, you're just cut it down and there's a tree trunk, not realizing there are roots underneath that tree. Come and on, I read this please. article. <laughs> And I read this article today and it talked about how the roots of a tree can like go all the way down to like about 20 feet and how much it can affect the underground, the piping, the plumbing, all those different things that are down below. And I think for us, we do a lot of surface level things to Mm. fix our confidence, surface level things to help us have those beliefs in ourselves, maybe in how we dress. We look for validation from other people. We start to do all these external things that we have never identified the roots cause, which might be that situation or that relationship that you left with your parents, which might be that bad relationship you were in, which might be some traumatic event that happened. So I think we must identify a root cause as to why you are having that limited belief. And then you have to kind of walk through that process of healing from that. And then when you are triggered, you know, okay, this isn't, this is connected to this issue and this has nothing to do with it. And just start to work backwards so you can start killing those roots. But we need to stop doing surface level things because that doesn't fix the root cause, get to the root cause. And then you start to work backwards to really heal and get past those deeply rooted issues that connect from something that's not even related to what's going on in your life right now. Listen, you y'all better go ahead and like and share because she's she dropping. See why this is why she is the leadership and team st- <laughs> expert. <laughs> but we are, I don't know, I feel like we're in a society, so you are successful. I would say I we're mid to working our way up kind of management, professionals, moms, uh, game changers, shout out to game hey. changers, <laughs> um, you know, speakers, all of that kind of stuff. But 
don't you feel at times, even professionally, that we are, you know, using again that metaphor of the tree, that we're in a leaf society. Like nobody cares about your roots. <laughs> we're, That's true. It's like really super. I mean, shout out to all the people on IG. You know, it's like an IG kind of life that most. Not, I'm not saying most, but that our society has kind of glorified and so people don't take time to really fix the roots but the reality is the roots determine how great the leaves and the longevity of that tree is and yes. so in a way a lot of us in our lives are hustling backwards yes. that's why we're in a society of debt that's why we're in a society that glorifies you know things that are really not important that's why half of the people that got their stimulus check it's gone already. Mm. <laughs> you about to go buy those Jordans. Why? <laughs> Why? And all of those, you know, kind of self-sabotaging or, you know, toxic behaviors, relationships, even work environment are a reflection of we really got to do some work with our thinking. Thinking. So what are some limiting beliefs that um, you have noticed in your expert professional opinion that are like, not only does it kill you as a leader, but they're like, you know, using the analogy of the car. So we talked about motivation and inspiration, right? Doing the work to get your mind right, to lead yourself well so that you can lead your, your team well, right? That is like fuel, that's energy. You have to guard your space, guard what you are, not only eating, but what you are consuming so that you can be and live into your optimal potential and have your mind right. So that's the fuel, right? That's the fuel that pushes your car. Negativity and limiting beliefs are like putting sand in that gas, that gas mm -hmm. tank, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's just go, you're gonna get stuck, it's gonna blow it up, <laughs> it's go, it's gonna crumble. So how do we deal with those things? What are some practical ways? Well, I mean, I think I'm like, even for myself, um, some of the limiting beliefs I've had is, you know, growing up, I'm West African. Um, my parents really believed in excellence in all that you do. Shout out to the Air Force I, I'm a part of, but they really looked at um, ensuring that you graduate, have certain type of degrees, like move up in status, right? So then when I started to pursue certain roles, I started to wonder because I took a different path. I didn't follow the path of everyone else. Like I had a very traumatic childhood. So what happened was when I did start to enter into leadership roles, I started to say that uh, maybe they won't accept me because I don't have the PhD. Maybe mm -hmm. they won't accept me if I don't because I don't have as much education. Maybe they won't accept me because I'm too young. Because mm -hmm. again, I grew up with this mindset, believing that you had to have a certain type of status, a certain type of degree to right. make massive impact. And I think that it really started to affect how I showed up as a leader because I started to second guess my decisions. I started to second guess even applying for roles if I was qualified enough. Mm. And then if you add the other aspect of me wanting to be liked so much because I was bullied as a young girl, West African didn't fit in. So now I'm trying to be liked. But again, my effectiveness as a leader, it wasn't there. I was not, I wasn't, I was hustling backwards and I was doing external things, trying to get people to like me. I was doing external things, thinking I had to look a certain way. I was doing external things saying, you know what, I'm going to go back to school and get this degree that might not even be, you know, where I'm supposed to be headed towards because I wanted to look a certain way. And I think it's, again, once you identify the root cause, ask yourself, how is it, lim how are those limited beliefs affecting you reaching your goals? Yeah. How is it affecting how you're getting to that next level? Because what happens is that after some time those beliefs start making you like you start to believe it oh yeah. you know what i didn't get that job because yeah you know what i looked at everybody else on the roster on that speaking event and they all had master's degrees and i don't mm -hmm. so you know what that's why i didn't get it right. and again you start to believe it so you start to repeat it and now your life and how you move is based off of limitations so yes. until you identify the root until you identify how it's affecting your future and your goals and recognizing that you are actually, instead of uh, combating it, you're actually fueling it, yeah. it's going to continue to hinder you. Yeah. 
uh, shout out to Candy. She said the battle is in the mind. And that is yeah. so true. And limiting beliefs doesn't always show up in like, oh, I'm mediocre or I'm not reaching my potential. It could show up in ways of I've hit this plateau. And to be transparent, when we became friends, I was at, a, at that place in my life where it was like there was what, what, what more do I need to do? Where else can I go? And I had to, one, recognize that I wanted to see more when I looked in the mirror, that I had to address some of the difficulties of, you know, things that I bury so much and that I needed to surround myself with a different context. Um, and having the courage and the faith to just walk out and make put yourself in an uncomfortable position which a lot of people aren't willing to do. And, and I think that is another part of overcoming limiting beliefs, that fear, and I think that's what, what was it? They say fear is false evidence appearing real. <laughs> yeah, that's what fear is, false evidence appearing real. <laughs> that is, what is false evidence appearing real. And it's that you have to like heal that. And I don't want to, you know, be, be strong and sensitive to what's going on, but there has to be a point in time where you address those limiting beliefs and put that to bed and go face forward into those fearful situations. And for me, it was uprooting myself out of the daily grind of what I was used to and making new relationships and being found in new places so that I can expand. People are so fearful of that stretch of that uncomfortable zone, but that's the zone where you're going to overcome. You can't overcome something that you don't confront. So what do you say to the person that's like, you know what, but I'm comfortable here. I, it's, I don't care if it's scary, I'm, you know, if it's scary. What do you say to that person? I mean, and again, if you look at the the mindset of like, we think of a garden, like just imagine like a, a flower is supposed to blossom fully, but then you've decided to put something over the flower and now it's like trying to blossom and it's like, ah, I can't blossom. So then eventually it's just going to take a form to the limited, you know, space that is going to be instead of blossoming all the way. And that's what you're doing. It's like you're putting a cap over yourself when you're supposed to just take it off and let yourself bloom and let yourself blossom. And let, I mean, what you're saying is so true. You have to do it scared. Yeah. You have to do it scared. Like, even though you're uncomfortable, do it scared because uncomfortability is going to allow you to stretch and grow. Uncomfortability yeah. is going to allow you to tap into those other talents and gifts that you specifically have. Uncomfortability is what you need in order for you to grow and for you to fully bloom. So yeah. that might mean changing, um, changing the relationships that you're in. That might mean get into a new circle. That might mean trying something different, but do it scared. And yeah. you're not going to know what's on the other side, but do it scared because right now you have a cap over with your potential and you have to allow yourself to bloom and in order for you to do that you have to take it off and do something um outside of the norm do Definitely. something so you're not limited because i always believe that for us there's somebody that you're supposed to help there's somebody that needs your product your service so there's somebody out there that needs you and because you're limiting yourself you're not allowing yourself to get to that next level and really reach the masses and really get to the full potential of who you can become that is so listen, y'all go ahead and give her some hearts, some love, like, share, comment. Candy said you can't grow in a comfort zone. Facts, facts. Go ahead. Uh, if you guys have questions, comments, you could go ahead and put them in the comments. We'll bring them on the screen. We're having a conversation tonight about limiting beliefs. And we just want to pour into you, motivate you inspire you because like we said before, motivation and inspiration are fuel that we all need. Now I'm about to say something that might get me in trouble. Uh -oh. I stopped watching the news. <laughs> me too. I stopped, me too. I stopped watching the news and there are certain people that we could only text. Like, don't call me. Yes. That just like you talked about moving that lid so that you can, you know, grow and, un and get out of your comfort zone and have space and room to grow. There are some people that you just need to. 
She brought out the props. <laughs> you know the baby. These are the baby had to be. <laughs> That's true. They, like we, as, especially in a sensitive time like this, I feel like this time is really, it's unprecedented. We keep hearing that word. It's like, we've never experienced anything like this before. And this is definitely a time for us to love on our family, settle down, slow down, do the things that we didn't have the time and opportunity to do before. But I also think it's a time for us to be very wise about who we allow to get that energy, that fuel. We have to be selective because I also think this is a time to produce, whether it's your book, whether it's uh, the new business, whether it's uh, your marriage, your relationships, like whatever it is that is pressing to you, whatever it is that you didn't have the time and the energy to do before. So baby, you better be careful. <laughs> Because people will suck the life out of you, whether it's on your job, especially now that we have to be on technology all the time. So what are the like some practical ways that we can protect our energy, right? Protect and garner ourselves, kind of like build a, 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 a hedge around, you know, letting those negative people kind of infiltrate or make those limiting beliefs even. Does that make sense? Oh, for sure. Ma I mean, magnify I, them. Yeah. I mean, I think like, just like you're saying, you're, what you're doing in the process is like, you're guarding your mind. You know that I, you have, you have those people that text you every update, every death. And like I said, it is so sad what is happening and how this is impacting the world, but being fueled that on a regular basis, all that's doing again, is like watering those seeds. Mm. Um, man, what if it happens to me? And now you start to function and you move based off of that fear. Again, false evidence appearing real. You get a call for you. Like, mm, is it like me? I have an itchy throat and I'm like, <laughs> Girl, what is this going on? I mean, and again, it doesn't change the reality of what's going on because it's so real. It's affecting so many people. I mean, it's touched people that we are even within business connections with or people we know yeah. know someone else. But the reality is you're guarding your mind. So what is it? Is it from the things you're consuming from TV? Is it from the relationships or the friendships that you're in? Friendships that you're in, you need to guard and protect your mind from because that's where it starts from. Your mind. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. starts from the mind. That's what Candy talked about. The battlefield is in the mind. So if it starts here, you have to make sure that you're protecting it. So what are you watching? Mm. What text messages are you engaging in? What conversation are you having? Is it beneficial? Is it fueling? Fueling your mind? Is it killing those roots of limitations? Or is mm. it fueling? Is it helping those roots grow deeper? And that's yeah. what we want to do the opposite of. So it comes from the things we watch, from the relationships we're consuming, um, excuse me, conversations we're consuming and, and having, and making sure that you're truly taking a really deep dive and a review of who you're around, what you're doing on a regular basis, and make sure that it's killing the roots of limitation and it's actually birthing that other side of you. What kind of activities from books, from um, coaching sessions, from things that you can invest in, that you can use your stimulus yeah. with. Because again, even if you look at the ad, I mean, the synonym for stimulus, it's, you know, stimulating is supposed to be something that's going to be fueling you, but mm -hmm. you're utilizing those funds to stimulate the limitations that you believe. Oh, I need to buy these Jordans like ASAP. Is that going to add value to? Exactly. I need to make yeah. sure that I buy this new TV because but again, you have to ensure that you're investing your time and your energy in things that are killing those limitations, those deep roots, and making sure that you're, it's making you walk towards becoming um, that, like I said, that, that flower that fully bloomed, that tree that fully blooms, and it's healthy. And then the leaves and the fruit that is produced from that are healthy because you have taken the step to fertilize it and really focus on things that's going to help you get to that next level. I think that's so important, especially now that we're like, like I said before, inundated with social media and the, and technology, because being in those kind of virtual worlds, it's, you know, it can trigger feelings of insecurity or I'm not enough or I'm not happy with my life. They have their lives look so much better on Instagram mm -hmm. um, than mine. And like you said, really being conscientious of one, that is, there is nothing outside of us that determines our value and our worth. 
that we yes. are innately beloved children of God, that we are innately people of value and worth, that when you were born, my father, God bless him, shout out to my, my Jamaican pops. He said, when God, God make you, God dash with them all. That means you <laughs> Shout out, Pops. <laughs> what up, Pops? <laughs> One of the greatest things he ever said to me, right? That when God made you, you, what's up, Doc? You, Sophia, you, uh, Dr. Camille, you, Candy, you, Aisha, uh, whoever else is on the line, when God made you, that you were uniquely created and crafted. And that is enough that nothing outside of you determines that value and worth and sometimes we have to like rehearse that to ourselves like no the jordans aren't gonna make me better no you know as much as i need and like to get my hair done if my hair done is not done i'm still <laughs> wonderfully and fearfully yeah. Man, no gel on my nails but i'm still one and, and rehearsing those things and so when we when i finally made the decision to join the coaching program that we're a part of. And now to do coaching myself, I would take a dry erase marker and I would write on my mirror. And every morning I would see whether it's uh, how much money I wanted to make that month or whatever my goals are or reminding myself who I was. Every time I looked in the mirror, I saw that to the mm -hmm. point where I, I started believing it um, to the point where I did it afraid and then I wasn't afraid anymore. And I think it's little things like that that we need to be intentional about so that we can take those limiting beliefs and transform them into enabling beliefs, right? Mm, where, where, where limiting beliefs hold us back, enabling beliefs stop the in its tracks. Don't think, like I have to I have to tell myself no uh you're you might be you might feel afraid but you're not afraid you're a conqueror uh you might feel uncertainty but you can be sure that what you will not do is fail uh and I got a pillow behind me guys I don't know if you can see it and I, <laughs> I see it it <laughs> says God is with her she will not fail um and so that you can have that around you so yes. that whenever those trigger moments happen, because let's be real, we're human. We're going to have moments where we're not operating uh, to our fullest potential or we don't feel, you know, wonderful and fabulous and empowered. And so to see it and to have it around us will give us those moments to flip back to, no, I'm not my limiting beliefs. I'm my enabling beliefs. Yes. Can you That's talk so powerful. Yeah, so that, that's what I did. What are ways that you do that in your life? Well, what I've done is, like I said, my circle has really been, I've revamped my circle a lot. Like I know that there are certain people that I can't talk to about certain things. We have a lot of these long-term relationships. And again, it's not like romantic relationships, but we have these relationships with people who unfortunately might always function from limitations. Well, you know, if I, I, I know that I can't talk to my family about my business. I love you guys. I love you, but certain people, they don't understand it because yeah. again, they'll look at it. You're a single mom. That's a limitation. Right. You got two kids. That's a limitation. You have a good job in the military. Don't worry about that. Just focus on your nine to five. I mean, that's a limitation. Where in my mind, I'm like, listen, I'm trying to look at life after that. I'm trying to build something. So my kids and my kids' kids, again, they can do something amazing mm -hmm. and impact the masses. So I know that I already have people that I can have certain conversations with them. I love them. They mean well, but their limitations are, yeah. and that's the thing, like a lot of times that for uh, other people, you might think that, you know, they're haters or they don't care or they don't want the best for you, but no, they, their limits, their limited mind is because they feel like that is the best for you. Mm. So I've created a circle, like every morning, Monday through Friday, I'm on an accountability call with people from all walks of life, from different states, from different countries, but we all have a common goal and it's to get to the next level. I do it scared. Every time yeah. I get on a live, every time I, I do something from a book, I'm always anxious. I'm always wondering, is it going to be good enough? But I do it anyway, because again, in the back of my mind, I know that there are people that need the message or people that want this message. So sometimes you have to recognize that your purpose is bigger than you. 
Yeah, definitely. A lot of us pray and say, God, use us, not realizing that God is using us. <laughs> you know, if you want to ask God to use you, oh, he's going to use you. But in yeah. order for him to use you, you have to make sure that, you know, you make these shifts and these changes because mm -hmm. he's going to have you helping someone else. He's going to have you in spaces and places where people need to hear your message. But you have to be able to open your mouth and actually speak. So yeah. it just came from changing my circle really being intentional. Like you said, whenever I have those beliefs now I'm in therapy, I'm open to say that I go to therapy every two weeks. Um, I actually graduated because I was going every week. Um, but you know, the trauma was so deeply rooted that I, I really needed to get deep into the weeds of the why and why mm. I was being triggered. So now that I've identified my trigger, when I see it coming, because I've taken the tools that my therapist gave me and I've, I've really gotten that level of self-awareness. Yeah. Now I know that when I have that feeling, I know it's coming from something that happened when I was a little girl and that is not reality. So now I'm saying, I believe I'm saying things like I can, I will, um, mm -hmm. I, I am capable instead yeah. of saying I can't, I won't, I'm this, I'm that. So it's really just from not only changing my environment, it's also getting to the root cause. And for me specifically, it was through therapy. And then also taking that, uh, combating the negative talk in my mind with positive things like yeah. I believe, I can, I will, I must, I have to. There are people who need it and really changing that verbiage. And that has really allowed me to push forward in my mission and my vision and supporting people. And I think that's so important. Uh, shout out to Sophia. She said, well said, we are innately children of God. Shout yeah. out to Dr. Camille. She said, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You guys go ahead, comment, like, and share with a, a team and leadership development expert, Aisha Thomas, um, who I can say is my team and my leadership development expert. because She changed the game. And we're talking about <laughs> overcoming limiting beliefs. And I think that's, so everyone, I believe, so let me speak personally. I believe everyone has the potential to lead. Everyone is a leader in some kind of way, capacity, uh, lane, whether they're the leader that's out front or the leader that's in back, or, you know, just the person that leads in small ways by making, you know, great decisions. But I also think there's a difference between being a leader and being a transformational leader. Yes. And so a transformational leader, you know, when you talk about things like going to therapy, when we talk about leading yourself and leading your team, when we talk about um, leading holistically, mind, body, and spirit, that gives so much room to transformation, to innovation, to creativity, a way of being in the world that I think somehow COVID-19 exposed as a country, we're not as progressive and transformational as we thought we were. Mm. Amen. To our business structure, to our economic structure, to you know, even our churches. <laughs> you know, I feel like a transformational leadership mindset kind of takes those limiting beliefs, pulls off the cover, exposes exposes them, and then you gotta get some new, like you talked about tools out of your toolbox. Mm -hmm. That That's really like currency, right? So that you can do the work within you to lead yourself better and to lead others better. And so when I talk about those tools, I think the tool that you brought to my life and to my team you know, and I've taken a lot of assessments. I've taken the spiritual gifts assessments. I've taken several assessments. But that DISC assessment helped me to understand both my strengths and my blind spots in a way that I didn't quite. I, and maybe it was just you. Maybe you just broke it down <laughs> to a way that I never. But can you talk about how when we talk about overcoming limiting beliefs, how that disc assessment can unlock some tools and some strategies for us to better become leaders of ourselves as well as our teams. Where, wherever, whether they're, whether people are entrepreneurs or whether they're nine to fivers or middle management, upper management, or no management and trying to, you know, advance in the career, how can that disc assessment as a tool help people to get there? 
Well, I've always been a believer that in order for you to effectively lead, you must master yourself. So if you don't know who you are and you're just moving on autopilot day by day, then you're doing yourself a disservice. And you really want to make sure that you're unlocking and having an understanding of yourself. How are you communicating? What are your strengths? Because what happens a lot of times, what I love about the assessments like the DISC, the values, the attributes is it, it basically allows everyone to understand that who you are is fine. Like it's, it's great. You have specific talents and gifts and who you are is fine. However, there's certain blind spots that you have. There's certain areas maybe that, Hey, maybe you're someone that's results driven. Maybe you're someone that really is creative and someone that's driven and motivated by, by goals and achievements. However, when you're building a team, when you're building this structure around you and trying to get your business to the next level, are you communicating effectively? Mm -hmm. Are you truly understanding if you're applying your strengths in the right areas? I know sometimes like even for me, I'm a solopreneur. I'm trying to be the jack of all trades, but I know that I have specific blind spots and I need to make sure that I am not trying to change who I am because that's the other mm. thing. A lot of times we try to change who we are to cater to what we think um, we need to be in order for us to be effective. No, what it is is that you're not changing who you are, you're changing the role. And now ooh, you're gonna build ooh. your team. Yeah, I better <laughs> like right there, like <laughs> there, tag your friend. <laughs> Say it again, Aisha. What, yeah. a lot of fun up people in there. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's not changing who you are. It's changing the role. Maybe it's you pivoting and focusing and maximize on your strengths here. And then when you're building your team, you're building your team based off of those areas. Because again, you're great at results. You're great at interaction. But now you need to bring someone in that's going to provide you the structure. That's someone that's going to come in and bring you the process. And now you guys are going to be the dream team and you can build upon each other's strengths. But that's what we do a lot. We feel like we have to change and become something different in order for us to be effective. No, maximize on your strengths, shift the role, bring in and build your team based off of those gaps and those blind spots. And then you guys can come together as a dream team and fully maximize those gifts that you have. Because again, God has given us different gifts. But what we do is we try to step into this lane of other gifts. Now, that ain't your gift, bro. Like that ain't going back over here. And I think uh, it's important, like you said, transformation leaders, we utilize these tools have an understanding of ourselves, but now we have the understanding of how to effectively communicate and how to help our team maximize on their gifts instead of putting them in places because of what you see on the surface. Yeah, and that is so frustrating. Shout out to Candy. She said, yes, the way she breaks it down takes the strategy to a whole nother level, dog. Well, I add that <laughs> part, but <laughs> to a whole level. Listen, that is so important because we spent... And I don't know, I'm going to speak on behalf of ladies who are in professional settings sometimes. We can like pivot and change ourselves to try to fit this hierarchy, this patriarchy, this, you know, way of doing and being. But for me, as a high D, uh, and I'm, I'm going to ask you to kind of break down the role. So I'm a high D and I'm an eight on the Enneagram. So that means I'm very results driven. Mm -hmm. Some people might say in my approach to things, it might even appear to be a little masculine. And so I was getting to a, and I'm young and I'm black. I mean, and I'm Jamaican yeah. from New York. So guys, I'm not arrogant. I'm just Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm from New York. Yes. Like a Jamaican could be barefoot, no, and like be the most arrogant person in the room, but it's just that we have confidence. And so I found myself in a lot of situations trying to like downplay that energy or downplay who I am to appease to other people. But you kind of really helped me. Aisha, are you still there? You dropped off on Facebook. Uh, I see you on Instagram. Yeah, come back on on Facebook. <laughs> But what you really allowed through the DISC assessment was to help me to see, no, this is who you are. Be aware of who you are. Be aware of how you adapt. Uh, and that was the game changer for me. So I'm a 99D and a 99I, which means D, I'm like dominating, results driven, you know, knocking down all the walls, aggressive, direct. And then the I, I'm kind of like friendly and like I'm your home girl. I'm I'm your ex the, the extroverted friend. And what Aisha helped me to see through the disc assessment is not how to ignore one 
and you know only pay attention to the other, but to be aware as I'm building a team of where I am in different moments. Uh, shout out to Sophia. She said, yes, Yardi with the Jamaican, <laughs> the Jamaican flag. Right. And, and, and understanding that that's okay, that who you are and how God created you is for a reason. But God in God's wonderful design created all of these other different types of people for you to build your, like I just said, your dream team. So whoever you are and whatever you're working on, whether it's a business, whether it's a program, whether it's a project, whether you're a church leader, like whoever you are, I want you to really, as we talk about overcoming limiting beliefs, don't feel as if that you have to be someone else uh, to do the work that God is calling you to do because who you are is intentionally designed and having that disc assessment to be aware of that so that you can lead yourself well and build your team around that, I think is amazing. So let us know in the comments. If you've taken the disc assessment, go ahead and put one. If you haven't taken the disc, disc assessment, put two. Aisha's coming back on Facebook in a minute. She's getting uh, online and she's going to break down what the D, the I, the S, and the C is. And we're going to talk about how she took uh, the work that we're doing to a whole nother level through that assessment. All right. So everybody go ahead. If you have take, if you have taken the disc assessment, I want you to go ahead and put one in the comments right now. If you haven't taken the disc assessment, I want you to go ahead and put two in the comments. Um, I know Candy's on the line. So Candy, go ahead and put one. Cause we know that you've taken it. You said it has, uh, taken, uh, that she breaks it down and takes the strategy to a whole nother level, which is so true. All right. So we have two ones. All right. One person said no. Uh, okay. So two people haven't taken it. Two people have, some people are watching, but they don't want to put anything in the comments. It's cool. We love you. We still here. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, Ice is coming back on the line. Are you dialing in on Facebook? Cool. <laughs> so why is it so important to take? So we talked about two boxes earlier. Um, and that's, and I think this time, you know, we talked, somebody had posted the other day, COVID-19 is not a productivity, um, <laughs> race is to prove who's more productive, uh, than the other. I, I, I agree with that sentiment, but I do think, and I was not, but, and I do think it's important for us to use this time wisely so that if we have the opportunity to become better, better aware of ourselves, um, better involved and connected to our families, uh, cultivate more enriching and loving and deep relationships, um, to flourish in our careers, um, to have, uh, you know, to meet our goals and our guidelines, all of those things start with us. If you don't love yourself, if you don't know, if you don't spend some time with yourself, come on, somebody. Come on, are you a single mama? Even if you marry with kids, if you don't take that time to know who you are, to love yourself, to be aware of yourself, you cannot sit. And this is my personal opinion. And maybe it's biblical too, but you know, that's, that's up to you, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you don't love you, how are you going to love your spouse, your children? How are you going to flourish on your job? How, how are you going to do any of those things if you don't take the time out to really have a good relationship with yourself? And so talk about uh, the D, the I, the S, and the C for those who haven't taken the DISC assessment, what are some, you know, general, you know, you don't want to go too in depth, but what are some general characteristics um, and what should people be aware of 
uh, during this time? So in regards to the DIS and the C, so the D is how you tend to approach problems. Um, so that's how you find solutions. The I is how you interact with individuals um, and you're, you share your opinions and your level of optimism. The S is how you like to pace yourself in environments. And then the C is how you like policies, procedures. Um, I'm a high C, so I'm a big rule follower. Um, so again, like people on different spectrums, like for instance, Napoli is a high D. Don't so give when me she any rules, because I'm a break <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so she's the kind of person where, where she's like, she's big on results. So as a high D, if there's a problem today, she wants to solve it today. She wants to answer today. But again, if you have someone that's a C, that's a high C, who's patient, who needs time to think about it, because again, they're big on the process. They want to give you a quality product. As a high D, she's going to ruffle the feathers of the high C because they're just like, listen, hey, let's you do this. it. Yeah, let's you're like, that. I need it right now. <laughs> but they need to they need time to process to understand because to them the process and the quality is important. If you have somebody that's a high C, that's a rule follower, okay, we need to follow these five steps. And then they have somebody that they're working with that's an I that's just like, don't worry about the steps. Let's interact with the people. I'm about the people. And the C is like, okay, listen, I I need you to follow these rules and I need you to do it this way. And I understand you want to put the people first, but by following this process, this is how we're going to get to this end goal. So for each Different yes, exactly. <laughs> They're checking the box, you know. They're following the rules. Like even as a high C, I'm always like, when people don't like to follow, like even the steps to put stuff together, like those IKEA tables or those tables you purchase, I'm like, you're gonna miss a piece. You're gonna miss a piece because again, quality. I want them the other side of it for it to be a quality product. So just imagine if you're someone that is a results-driven individual, you're working with someone who's really interactive, you're going to clash because you want the results done. But when the um, interactive person that I gets around and they get a phone call, they're going to want to have that phone call and really nurture that relationship first. And then they go to the results second. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you have these understandings of the behavior styles of your team, because again, you might know that, okay, this person's an S. I know I'm really results driven. Let me, let me ask them, Hey, do you need more time? Those people like to be in a democratic type of work environment. So they don't like to be told what to do. So as a leader, you're asked, Hey, what do you feel? Are you okay with this? You're getting their feedback. Mm -hmm. Someone that's a C, you're like, okay, what do you think? Do we did we miss any details? Because they're going to be able to dot every I, cross every T, and identify the gaps and the pieces that are missing. And they might need an additional three days, but you know, when you get that product, baby, it's going to be amazing. You know what was really helpful for us, Aisha, and shout out to my husband. He's probably going to be like, you're talking too much. You're being too transparent. <laughs> but it's nuggets with Nathalie. And you ain't here tonight. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Y'all better like and share and comment. I'm going to get in trouble with my husband. I'm joking. But seriously, so when we talk about overcoming limiting beliefs, for a long time, I thought the reason why Leon and I would have certain arguments was because we had the same personality type. And when I took the DISC assessment, when you talk about the DISC assessment being as a tool to overcome limiting beliefs, girl, you gave it to both of us. You helped us and you walked through it. And it was like, oh, I was, <laughs> <me?"> yeah. <laughs> I was a lot of our arguments were, or was around like either work that we were doing together or because we collaborate. We have we're business owners together. We, even though we're both ministers, we have individual things. And he was just like, you know, you're doing too much. He would say stuff like, you're doing too much or you're moving too fast. And you were like, oh, because for him, the process matters. And for mm -hmm. you, it doesn't. And when I thought it was just like, we both were like. Yeah, you're like, I just want to get it done. And he's like, I want to get it done, but I want to do it detailed and in order. So it looks good and quality on the other side. Yeah, but I didn't have the disc assessment. So I was just like, you know, boss black lady, like he's trying <laughs> to boss me around. He's trying to tell me what to do. And my limiting belief was, you know, we both can't be bosses. But that wasn't the truth. The truth was that I needed to lean into a skill and a tool that he possessed that that is not a strength for me. And yeah. taking that assessment has changed the way that we work together, has changed the way that we communicate together, 
has really helped us um, to the point where he would say, you know, my C is not really high right now. Um, let's mm. find somebody else to do this. Or <laughs> that's good though, but that's the awareness you want. You want to be able to know, like I have my seasons where I'm like, I don't feel like being structured right now, but that's what you're getting. You're getting a level of self-awareness because it's just like the love language. We tend to communicate and function based off of what we think or based off of our behavior style, not realizing that you're working with people who are interactive and they need you to have that fun banter with them first before you get into the work. You don't realize that you're pressuring that team member so mm. much and getting things done and now right. you're turning them off and now they're not motivated to support you because you haven't taken time to allow them to A, provide you feedback or give them enough time to process it. You're yeah. not following the rules. You're in such a rush to get things done. And now you're missing all those details. And now it's like you put this product out and come to find out just like the Apple products. Right. I'm like, how many seeds do they have on their team? They'll pull out <laughs> products. And every time they put it out, it, they end up saying, oh, we got to make some fixes. We have right. some bugs. So, again, it's like those little details that can really maximize your business, your brand, even in the nine to five space, even in your relationships. A lot of us communicate with each other from I'm going to I'm going to give him advice based off of results. And he's like, whoa, wait a minute. Let's think about this before we address it. You want to address the conversation and the argument right now. And he's like, I need two days. Let me process it. Let me yep. think about it to move forward then let's come together as a family and talk about how to move forward so it's beneficial in all aspects of life and again i think that the communication piece and having that good understanding of one another is what the game changer is yeah. and now you can truly motivate and inspire and pull mm -hmm. and transform yourself and the individuals around you and that's so transformed we're getting ready to close guys so if you have any comments questions go ahead and drop them we have aisha with us she is talking about overcoming limiting beliefs um, and now she's giving us actual tools to put in our two bucks, toolbox right now so that when you leave Nuggets with Nathalie at 8 o'clock Central, 9 <laughs> EST, that you have some tools that you can take with you to overcome your limiting beliefs. And I think seeing the world only through your lens is a limiting belief. Yes. Seeing the world only through the way that your personality is driven is a limiting belief. Um, and I think, you know, even like when we talked about earlier about hierarchy, patriarchy, kind of traditional models of leadership, that has been our society's greatest downfall because yeah. it's terrible. When, we, when even we look at how that has impacted COVID-19, and how certain people from a certain class and a certain color are insidiously more of impacted because we have set up these leadership and power silos that have, you know, basically gotten rid of 90% 90, 90 of, of the population. And so what's great about transformational leadership and using that disc assessment is that you are able to see the diversity of your team. You're mm -hmm. able to see the interconnectedness of your team. You're able to improve communication. You're able to maximize, like you said, your ability to execute. You're able to maximize your team to flourish in the reality of who, who they are and how they complement each other. And so like we, there are, that's why I wrote the book, Transformation Starts With Me. Like, yeah. I have to be the one to show this different type of leadership because we see where traditional leadership has gotten us. The fact that black women are the most educated population and still making less money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when companies want something done, who do they call Aisha? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> uh, right. And all women are wonderful and all yes. races are wonderful and all people are wonderful. And all of us are beloved, innately children of God who are valuable and of worth and transformational leadership unlocks that. Yes. Uh, it, 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 and that disc assessment is a tool for us to open our eyes and see that. If you guys have any questions, comments, we're going to get out of here soon, but we want to let you know 
uh, no matter who you are, no matter what you are going uh, through, no matter what your goals and objectives are, you matter, your leadership matters, and it impacts so much um, in your life. And we're giving you tools tonight to knock out those limiting beliefs with some enabling beliefs and some tools um, to help you. So Aisha, what are there any last words that you want to share with the people tonight? Yeah, just like we were saying, like in this season, I think that, you know, we're raw, we're naked. We don't have the nails. We don't have the hair. We don't have anything available to us. And edge this control. is really, <laughs> don't <laughs> edge control, okay? Amazon is taking longer. I mean, everything, there's just so many things that you can't do, but there's so many things you can do. So just like we talked about earlier, let's ask yourself, what are those limited beliefs that you have? identify the root cause. Where did it come from? Is it something from back when you were bullied as a kid? Is it something back from when your father walked out that door? Where did it come from? And now start identifying what is the process? How can you heal? How can you work on thriving through it? Mm. What can you implement? Do you need to uh, uh, cut, put somebody on do not disturb? Because again, everything they submit to you is really making that root grow deeper and you need to start really working on connecting with the right kind of people so you can kill those roots is it that there yes. is it changing your circles is it hiring a coach is it becoming a part of a program so i really want you to guys to go back and start thinking about where do my little limited beliefs come and really start to dial back so you can mm -hmm. start working on killing that root yes. so you can thrive and come around on the other side of it more confident and more effective as a leader at home in your business mm -hmm. and everywhere else that you're leading and listen, you're worth it, okay? You are worth it. Uh, so what I want you to do right now, go ahead, like, give Aisha some love. She's so phenomenal. I appreciate you, sis. You're amazing. <laughs> uh, go ahead, like, share, tag a friend, and know that you are amazing. You are wonderful. So I'm giving you your enabling beliefs tonight, okay? Are you? I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Are you listening? You, you are a transformational leader and every good thing that you want to see and do in the world is already inside of you. Um, all you need are the tools to unlock it. All you need is to be around the right people uh, to, to motivate and inspire you. Do not forget tonight uh, that analogy that we gave you of the car, right? Your motivation and your inspiration, that's your fuel baby. That's going to get you to the other level, but you got to be careful of those limiting beliefs, right? That sand that's going to be placed into your gas tank to slow you down and to stop you. And so I want you to unlock everything that you need in that toolbox to become better, uh, stronger, wiser, more self-aware, uh, so that you can go out and do what God has created you to do. And that's make a difference. And that's to be a transformer because you are a transformational leader. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you next week. Next Bye. time. Right here. Stay <laughs> leading in transformation. Yes. <laughs>